So today we are going to discuss three different types of products that we use in wound care most often in our pharmacy. Now currently I'm finding it difficult to understand the products that we use in wound care. So I decided to make a video about products that are most commonly used. So the golden rule in wound care is that the wound must be moist to optimize natural healing, but not wet because that can lead to maceration. Before we start looking at the products, we first have to discuss some important terminology. The first one is exudate. Now exudate is a mixture of serum, fibrin and white blood cells that came from the blood vessels and are located inside of the wound or at the area of inflammation. Slough, it means to separate dead tissue from living tissue, as well as debridement. It means the removal of dead, damaged or infected tissue from the wound to promote the natural healing of the healthy tissue. Granulation tissue temporarily replaces the lost tissue in the wound. Right. A partial thickness burn is when the epidermis is affected. And a full thickness burn is when the epidermis and the dermis are affected. All right. And the last one. Collagenase. Collagenase is an enzyme produced by Clostridium histolyticum and its action is highly specific to denaturated collagen in necrotic tissue. And this makes it effective for the removal of detritus, the formation of granulation tissue and epitalization of dermal ulcers and severely burned area. By having a quick look of the terminology, it will be more easy to understand the discussions of the following products that we are going to discuss now. So let's start with intracyte. Intracyte falls under the class of a hydrogel and it contains of a product named sodium carboxymethyl cellulose. All right, so what does intracyte do? It is gonna absorb the exudate from the wound surface to prevent slough formation. It also causes rehydration and the rehydration produces more rapid debridement of the necrotic wounds and the removal of slough without damaging fragile granulation tissue. Okay. Now the indications for intracyte is going to be a cavity wound or an extravasation injury, a venous ulcer or a pressure sore. Any wound that has a kind of a depth to it and has also a large exudate because hydrogel absorbs the exudate to make the wound area less wet Okay, so now contraindications is that you cannot put intracyte on exposed tendons or muscles or bones and it is not for partial thickness and full thickness burns. Precautions, the initial application should be under the direction of a health care worker. If the wound has signs of infection or there is a fever present or tenderness and redness or a purulent discharge. This should be treated before the intracyte is administered. Wounds with a high risk of infection will include your diabetic foot ulcers, ulcers caused by syphilis and patients with TB or leprosy. Side effects of intracyte include a discomfort or irritation for a short period of time. Now how do you apply this product? Now we as pharmacists won't we won't apply to the patient's wounds, but we definitely will be asked questions around how to apply it. Maybe the doctor did show the patient, but they are just a little bit unsure here and there. And also where this application is important and also to know what products are used for what type of wounds. It's going to help you when you're working in, um, for example, me working in a government hospital. We don't have all the stock options available to offer our patients. So you gotta work with what is available. And for you as a pharmacist to make that swap or that change, to call the doctor and ask maybe, can we give this instead of this? You will need this background knowledge to make the correct and the right decision. So how do we apply intracell? Firstly, you're gonna clean or irrigate the wound with a saline. So from a pharmacist's perspective, you will provide the patient with the TTO with a bottle of saline. Okay, then you remove the cap of the nozzle and you dispense the gel into the wound at least five millimeters depth. Cover the wound with a secondary dressing 
and if the exudate comes through the second dressing, the injured site should be removed. Okay? It means there's too much fluid. Initially, a daily dressing is fine, especially when the wound is necrotic or sloughy, but it may be left for a maximum of three days in later stages of healing. Okay, now let's move to our next product, and this is Eurexel. Now, this is an ointment, and it contains of collagenase, clostridium, peptidase A, and proteases. So, how it works is that it gently, bloodless and pain-free, it causes enzymatic debridement of wounds, and the sloughs are dissolved or separated, and the removal is made easier. The indications will be for wounds that have a type of ulceration involved, maybe pressure sores, poor healing necrotic wounds, and so on. Contraindications is that you shouldn't apply it with another topical ointment, as this can make your ointment less effective. Precautions. In the beginning of the treatment, a burning sensation and a pain may be felt on the wound surface, so it's nice to just inform the patient about such a sensation so they are not alarmed but they know that it's part of the side effects and that it will get better over time. Now how do you apply this ointment? The ointment is applied once or twice a day in a two millimeter thick layer. It should be in close contact with the wound surface. You can cover the wound edge with a zinc paste to minimize the discomfort. Then just some advice they give is to soften a dry and hard crust by applying a moist dressing and the necrotic material should be removed when the dressing is changed. Now our next product is Drawtex, which is a hydroconductive wound dressing and the mechanism of action works in three ways. It lifts, holds and transfers the exudate wound debris and bacteria away from the wound bed. Okay, so it has three mechanisms. First, a capillary second a hydroconductive and third an electrostatic mechanism and this type of dressing supports natural healing and it aids the wound beds preparation without damaging a newly formed tissue indications for such a dressing would be acute wounds like a complex surgery wound and a burn especially first and second degree or chronic wounds like a leg ulcer a diabetic foot ulcer and a pressure ulcer the only contraindication for this product is that you cannot use it when there is arterial bleeding present. Okay. Precautions. A wound contact layer should be used on burns and low exudating wounds to prevent adherence to the bed of the wound. For example, a paraffin gauze. Now, if you look at the picture, you will see it is a very cotton-like material and it can cause extreme pain if that small cotton fibers can stick to the wound when you remove it. Okay, and it can also cause if cotton or any gauze cotton-ish material is stuck to the wound, it can cause a secondary bacterial infection. That's why you always want to prevent any type of dressing sticking to your wound and when you remove it, leaving some cotton fibers in the wound area. Now the application is that you're always going to use an aseptic technique and they recommend using sterile gloves. So like all of your other dressings, you clean the wound before you apply the dressing. Now these dressings are very versatile, so um, you will cut it into different shapes according to the requirements for your wound. So for example, the sacral shape, you can cut into a heart and that will fit perfectly on a wound on the sacrum or on the hip. Also remember to cut vertically into your dressing. Then the spiral shape will be more used for cavity wounds or amputations or abdominal wounds. And lastly, the stoma shape is for high exudating wounds that leaks fluid into surrounding healthy tissue. For example, a tracheostomy tube or enteral feeding tubes or even a chest drainage system that you need to cover up. So you will also apply a non adherent perforated dressing if it is a low exudating wound. For moderate to high exudating wound, you can apply directly to the wound bed. Like we said, if it's a drier wound, we're going to use a paraffin gauze between the wound and the drawtex. 
If it is a high exudating wind, you can apply more layers if needed. So you can apply it for at least two layers above the wound edges. Right, after the Jortex is placed on the wound, you're going to cover it with a secondary dressing. So for this type of wound dressing, you can change it every one to three days, depending on which state of healing your wound is in, but not exceed more than seven days. All right, so there is some bits and pieces of information for wound treatment. And I must say that it helped me a lot to look into the products and to just revise the details of which type of product is which is used where and why we are using them in such a specific way. So if you like this type of content, you can leave me a comment and maybe I can make a part two of wound care.